Thanks for joining me for Sports on the Pulse. I'm Hans Mensah, the Black Stars head coach, Milovan Raivach, has named teenager Felix Afenajan in his 20-man, 28-man squad for this month's World Cup Qatar 2022 Group G qualifiers against Ethiopia and South Africa. The 18-year-old who made his senior debut for AS Roma against Hagliari last month has been handed a maiden call-up by the Serbian trainer. He's joined by Sheriff Tiraspol midfielder Edmond Addo, who's been impressive in the ongoing UEFA Champions League and the Moldovan League. Let's check out the full complement of the squad, the 28 players who have been called up for those two assignments. So, goalkeeper Joseph Wolakot still in the team. He plays for Swindon Town. Lawrence Atizigi is with St. Gallen in, in Switzerland. Manav Nurudin plays for Upen. Richard Atta of Accra Hatofuk are the four goalkeepers who have been called up. In defence, uh, Milovan Raivas has called up uh, Andy Yadom of Red NFC. Philemon Balfour um, still remains in the team. He plays for Dreams FC. Baba Abdul Rahman is with Red NFC. Gideon Mensa plays for Bordeaux. Daniel Amate is with Leicester City. Alexander Jiku of Strasbourg. There is Celta Vigos, Joseph Edu, and uh, Columbus Crew. Um, skipper Jonathan Mensa also in there, as well as Asante Koroko centre back Ismail Abdul Ghani. In midfield, Baba Idrisu of Real Mallorca, Thomas Partey of Arsenal, Mubarak Wakasu makes a return to the team. He's with Shenzhen FC, Edmond Adu of Sheruti Paul, and Mohamed Kudus of Ajax as well as Daniel Kofitre of FC St. Pauli in the German lower leagues. The strikers are Richmond Boachi Yadom of Beita Jerusalem in Israel, makes a return to the team. Benjamin Tete of Yeni. Um, Malatia Spor, there is Felix Afenajan of AS Roma and Kayla Bekuban of Genoa. The wingers are Andre Ayu of Al Saad, Jordan Ayu of Crystal Palace, Abdul Fatal Isahaku of Dreams FC, Kamal Din Sulemana of Rene, and um, Samuel Owusu of Al Fire. So those are the players who have been called up for the, these um, all-important assignments for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. So Rick Wampofu joins me in studio with perspective and analysis. Any name in there that surprises you, Riku? Well, I think, yeah, we have to understand that call-ups would always... There's never a right call-up yeah. and there would always be question marks. You just want to limit it as much as possible. First off, I'm impressed with the retention rates. Uh, okay. start, the currency stands at 75 percent we are seeing 24 of the previous 32 still present so it shows that Milo at least has identified his core as However, a measure of consistency yeah probably more than we saw in the CK O'Connor okay. and uh, that's a good point however I think names uh, such as uh, Philemon Bafo has left a lot of Ghanaians talking <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is, is his, sit, his sit call up mm. uh, since 2020 and uh, that's the second highest any player has received. And so you would expect that he would be that type of tier because essentially what you're trying to say is that you depend on him. And so you've called him the second highest is that, in the past is, year. Is that possibly something that, I mean, yes, we were giving CK Akonol the stick for calling Philemon Balfour. Milovan Rivas has come and is still calling him. Is it something that he's seen that perhaps we monitoring the Ghana Premier League are not seeing? No, there's, there's nothing that he's seen. And I say this because in the last match, he called Philemon and then Andy Adam. Andy Adam was hit. And Melo himself was left to one right back and ended up playing Daniel Mate, who is a centre back, as a right back in both matches. And so if you couldn't even trust Philemon to give him two minutes, Fatau Mohamed came in his debut call up and he played ahead of uh, Philemon Bafo. Fatau, who had never played national team football. And then you look at Amate, who barely plays as a right back nowadays being played as a right back, all, all ahead of Philemon. It just tells you that the guy is probably not deemed good enough. And so the question is, is there a case that he is only good enough to be called, uh, but not good enough to be played? Uh, that would be strange because, I mean, you don't call people just to occupy spaces. You call people because you think they are the best 28 players that Ghana can put But all 28 will not play, even if Philemon Balfour is not called. Yeah, Another but, player is called in his place. All 28 players will not be playing. But the idea is that you want to have players who can slot in because you're anticipating anything could happen. Mm. You know, 
it's COVID times. Anything your player could test positive hours before a game, and someone has to slot in. Mm -hmm. Someone can pick an injury in training. But the whole idea of calling twenty eight is that you want to give yourself that cushion that if anyone is absent from the starting eleven, mm -hmm. at least you trust that the replacement. And, and that, and that question has enough. been answered when Daniel Amati was made to play at right back in the absence of Andy Yadon. Yeah. Okay. There is also the, the small matter of Felix Afinajan who has been called up. A whole debate around it. Some feel that, um, you know, the boy should be allowed to establish himself properly at, at the AS Roma. 77 minutes of senior football, some do not think is enough for him to be in a call up into the Black Stars. Well, let's start off with uh, Milovan, the man who called him. He says that he believes the kid is ready and he showed it through his development that he doesn't need so much time. And if a coach such as Jose Moreno who demands a lot, is, has put his faith, um, his faith in the boy, then it shows that he, he is good enough. And from what he's seen, he thinks he's ready for the national team football. Well, there's always the outlier case, the, the kid who pops up and doesn't follow the usual trajectory Absolutely. of development. Yeah. And you should understand that every player, there's no one way to development for a mm -hmm. player. So, I mean, I understand where both parties are coming from. And you would want to give him the opportunity and let him know that, he is a big player and we are going to heavily rely on him from the onset. And uh, there's also the school of thought that it might be too early for him. So I, I understand where both parties are coming from, but I, I think I side with Roma. Okay. And mm. they are saying that they don't want to release the player because they feel it's too early in his development. Uh, and, 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 and of course, quick one, are we looking at a potential starter in Afinaja? Can he come in and just slot in as a, as a main striker for the Black Stars? Well, I look at the strikers, Benjamin Tete, I don't think he did enough to warrant a starting spot. Mm. We've brought in Boachi Adam, just two goals in Israel in eight games, not impressive for me. Uh, I look through that list and I'm struggling to see any real striker who you can say that this guy is going to start all games for Ghana. So there is an open chance for him. And I think that's what Milo might be considering. And uh, you can look at uh, Kubantu has been struggling for goals <laughs> in Genoa. Well, we'll see um, as to whether he'll be able to grab this opportunity. Felix Afinajan of AS Roma, trusted by Jose Mourinho. 77 minutes of senior football for Roma, yet to score bad. Milovan Raivak thinks that the boy is ready. You know what they say, um, if he's good enough, you know, it's, there's no problem with it. You know, he has to be able to play, and so the man has been called up. We'll keep bringing you up to speed on matters related to the Black Star, of course, you can read. The very latest at myjoyonline.com forward slash sports. Oreku, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Hans Mengzando.